الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على الموث رحمة للعالمين نبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد اليوم 14 من شهر صفر 1443 الموافق ل 21 من شهر سبتمبر 2021 نواصل درسنا في هذا الكتاب المبارك رياض الصالحين أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يبارك فينا وفيما نتعلمه وأن يغفر لنا الزلات ويرحم المؤلف ويرفع درجته في العليين So today إن شاء الله we'll be dealing with the hadith of جابر بن عبد الله رضي الله عنه قال كنا يوم الخندق نحفر فعارضت كدية شديدة فجاءوا إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقالوا هذه كدية عارضت في الخندق قال أنا نازل ثم قام وبطنه معصوب بحجر ولبثنا ثلاثة أيام لا نذوق ذواقا فأخذ النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم المعولة فضرب فعاد كثيبا أهيل أو أهيم فقلت يا رسول الله إذن لي إلى البيت جابر رضي الله عنه said I remember the time where we were the, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during the battle of the Ahzab the battle of Ahzab is a battle that came after the battle of Uhud no Badr thumma Uhud and then Ahzab came all of them are I mean the Uhud and Ahzab they are considered as the revenge the Quraysh is not happy with that which the Prophet ﷺ did during the Battle of Badr and during the Battle of Uhud also itself. And the Jew in Medina also were not happy with the progress of Rasulullah ﷺ. They realize that they are going to fail in their mission, uh, which is to put him down to not let him succeed in that mission. And they already know that he has to succeed because they believe you know, they believe firmly that he is the last and the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they are not willing to support or to accept him because he isn't from them. As if, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent somebody from them, they will accept him. And I'm saying this because they rejected their own prophets and messengers, you know, and for sure, for them to accept uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even if he is one of them, and he from the children of Ishaq, alayhi salam, they will not accept him. So that's just uh, excuses uh, given uh, by them, which are none other than useless excuses. So uh, in this battle, the uh, non-Muslims uh, from Quraysh and Ghatafan and uh, also other tribes, they cooperated, they managed to bring to Medina not less than 10,000 soldiers to fight the Muslimin. And uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in a very critical situation. As you know, uh, Salman al-Farisi advised the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to block Medina from the side where it could be attacked by somebody. Because Medina was naturally protected by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala from all the three angles except one. You know, the, the, the two angle, the Al-Gharb al sharq uh, west and the, the east, they are protected by strong black rocks which are a bit sharp so working on them is not easy and if you, you work in them it's not easy then for sure riding horse on them is not easy and if this is the case then fighting towards that di direction is not easy so nobody can come to fight Medina from those two, two directions so we have the other two direction the north and the south one of them is closed by the mountains you have Uhud is there so it's a very big mountain, so it covers uh, that, that direction. So army will not naturally come from that direction. So we have only one direction which is open. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ was advised by Salman al-Farisi to make the trench, as you already know. And the Prophet ﷺ, he used to seek the advice from his companions. And Salman al-Farisi was just accepting, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, he just freed himself 
you know, from the master after that long story that you have known when he was searching for the truth and he met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the end of the day. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked the companions to help him and support him to free himself and he did. They did uh, support their brother and he freed himself from that Jew. So Salman al-Farisi participated in that uh, battle and he gave his contribution. He advised them to make the trench. And subhanAllah, that trench blocks the kuffar from reaching the Prophet Sallallahu and the companions. So it was a very tough moment, you know, for the Prophet Sallallahu and his companion, very, very tough. You know, if you want to know how, how critical was the situation, go and read Surah uh, Al-Ahzab. You know, subhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ جَاءُكُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ وَمِنْ أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ وَإِذْ زَاغَتِ الْأَبْصَارُ وَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرَ وَتَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ الظُّنُونَ هُنَالِكَ بْتُلِيَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَزُلْزِلُوا زِلْزَالًا شَدِيدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they came, you know, to you, مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ You know, from top, from uh, down, you know, from every angle they can come, you know. They, they surrounded Medina. They besieged the place because they were around 10,000, if not more than that. <clears throat> and they were saying, most likely the population in Medina, we're not talking about the army, where the population in Medina does not reach 10,000. So for sure those who fight, they will not reach 10,000, you know. Very critical moment. How to stop this, uh, this army from moving into Medina? That's the reason why the, Jew, the Jews of Bani Qurayza, they thought, Khalas, that will be the end of Medina. Muslims cannot resist anymore. And uh, if this is the case, there is no point of us keeping the, the pact, you know, and the treaty between us and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they broke it. Qadr min Allah Azza wa Jalla. They broke the treaty and they cooperate with the, with the enemy who came to fight Medina. That was a clear breaking of the, the treaty because they agree with the Prophet Sallallahu in the first place not to fight Rasulullah and not to cooperate with somebody who is fighting Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he also will not fight them and he will not cooperate with somebody who is fighting them. And if somebody attack Medina, they will all cooperate and fight that person. <clears throat> if somebody is fighting them, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will help, you know. It's like we're one entity in terms of living in the place so they protect their interests. In terms of religion, they are totally different. But in terms of living in the place, it's like one entity. They have a right to stay and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now the place is at his hand. So he told them, no need to keep fighting. Let us cooperate and develop the place, you know, and progress, you know. But unfortunately, he was dealing with, with the Jews. So they cooperated with them and uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, the fear was so tough, you know, the situation was so tough with the believers. No, SubhanAllah. He said, وَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرَ وَتَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ الظُّنُونَ هُنَالِكَ بْتُلِيَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَزِلْزُلُوا زِلْزَالَ الشَّدِيرَ You have at that moment, group of munafiqeen, they left. And also you have some Muslims also left. And uh, they kept on telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about those munafiqeen, إِنَّ بُيُوتَنَا عَوْرَةٌ وَمَا هِيَ بِعَوْرَةٌ إِن SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very simply test people so that we will know who is truthful and who is not. You know, they kept on lying. They said, no, we left our houses in a state of fear. And we, we, don't, we don't trust the Jew. You know, we don't know what, what, what are they going to do with our families, you know. So we have to go back and protect our family. And the Prophet Sallallahu uh, uh, Alaihi Wasallam was told by Allah that they were just lying. That was no such a case in Medina, but they were just lying. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had to gather the sisters in one place and the children in one place and put some heavy protection on, on, uh, on them to make sure that nobody from the Jew, because now when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam realized that the Jew, they are not more keeping that treaty because he sent to them Sa'd bin Mu'ad and Sa'd bin Ubadah and, uh, and when they went and they asked them about the treaty, are you still holding upon the treaty between us? They said, no, we're not. We're not. We are... You are free, we are free, you know. So the Prophet Sallallahu already understood the message, you know. So that's why now the fear is there, you know. They used to be uh, having the fear of the, the uh, what do you call the, the army that came from Mecca, you know. They used to be afraid of those 10,000, but now from inside Medina also you have around 1,000 people also. 1, 000, uh, 700 to 1,000 people also that can attack from inside. So that's the reason why if you see the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the fear in the heart of the Muslims, subhanAllah, it was a very tough moment. He says, You imagine, 
the description by the Quran that says that the heart is like the heart leaves its position and reaches the throat. You know, Subhanallah. Allah says, Wazul They were really being tested by Allah subhanahu the believers. And they were shook on the earth, you know. People are in a state of fear, you know. So they completed the trench, and this is uh, what we'll be talking about while they are digging. Jabir was narrating some of the events that took place in the, in, in the, in the, at, that, uh, at that time. You know. But Alhamdulillah, after the trench had been completed, they tried to cross it, they couldn't. They tried to cross it, they couldn't. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَدَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِغَيْذِهِمْ لَمْ يَنَالُوا خَيْرًا وَكَفَ اللَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ قِتَالًا SubhanAllah, very beautiful mention. If you put your trust in, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will do the things for you. You don't need to worry at all. Imagine that battle, the Muslims did not fight. You know, The Muslims did not fight. There was few you know, clashes, very, very few at the minimum. But to have a real battle, it, does, it did not happen. Who did the battle? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did it for them. But He wants them to participate also, to do their best, you know, Whatever they can do, the rest is at the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he says, So the Prophet at that moment, you know, one one night before they left the place, subhanAllah, the Prophet asked the believers, this is what added to the pressure, you know. I mean, I mean what helped us to understand how much uh, the believers are uh, subhanAllah uh, 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 in a state of difficulty, are uh, pressured, you know, by this by this event. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, was telling them one night, "Man yatini bi khabarin qawmi walahul jannah." You know, if you know the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you will really understand what I'm talking about. That the situation is really tough because he is. They are actually doing what they're doing, looking for the jannah. But now Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is telling them. Who can just go to the place where the enemy, you know, landed, you know, where they base, you know, they build their tent and everything, you know, uh, they camp where they're camping. He said, who can just go and see what exactly these people are doing right now and come and tell me what are they up to and I can guarantee him Jannah. SubhanAllah. Nobody is moving, my dear brothers and sisters. Nobody is moving. He kept on saying, who can st stand up, you know. That's the last night. He said, please, who can go and get us the news about these people? I can guarantee him Jannah. Nobody's moving. You know why? The fear was already there. And also it was night and the night was completely dark. And they said that the, the, the environment in the weather was extremely cold, very cold, cold and windy. Something which is strange, you know, very cold. Muslims are shivering, you know, the fear is there and the cold is there, you know, subhanAllah. So the Prophet ﷺ was telling them who can go and check and see what exactly are they doing. Nobody is moving. The Prophet ﷺ, he himself, he touched to see, trying to look for somebody. So he touched somebody. When he touched, he, he touched Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman. He said, man, man hada. Hudayfa said, Hudayfa, you know, now the Prophet ﷺ is asking him, he has to answer, he has to reply the call. So the Prophet ﷺ said, who is this? He said, Hudayfa. The Prophet ﷺ said, come here Hudayfa, Hudayfa, stand up, please go and check for us, subhanAllah. He says, he says, وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لِطَاعَةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ لِطَاعَةِ اللَّهِ وَطَاعَةِ رَسُولِهِ بُدٌ SubhanAllah. He says, when the Prophet said that, so I already know that there is no way for me except to move. Allahu Akbar. Wallahi, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the reason why those generations succeed. They succeeded because of this. Allah said, finished. Rasulullah said, it finishes. You know, they don't have any question. The point is, did he say it or not? So he said, I know that there is no way for me to say no to Rasulullah sallallahu that's why I, I just stood up, you know. He said, if I know that I have an excuse, I will tell him, Ya Rasulullah, I can't, please excuse me in this mission, I can't go. But he says, I know that by law, you know, Islamically, I cannot say to Rasulullah sallallahu no. So when he told me, Hudayfa, go, I just stood up. 
you know, subhanAllah, he knows that class, he has to. So the Prophet ﷺ told him, go on, go and do it. And subhanAllah, look at what happened. This, this battle has so many, you know, ajaib miracles and strange things that took place in it, you know. A lot of lessons we can learn, you know, from this, this battle. But this is not time for it. I just want to refresh your mind with the battle so that you can understand what exactly is happening, you know. So he stood up. He said, as soon as I move from the tent, as soon as I move from the tent, the, the cold weather is gone. Is gone. It is there with other people. Uh, other people are shivering, but for me, it's like I'm living in a normal environment. Why was that? Because he's on a mission for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah removed the whole thing for him. The fear was gone. The thing was gone. The Prophet Sallallahu told him, "Go to the place. Wala shay'an hatta tajini, He said, "When you reach them." Your job is just to check and watch and see what exactly are they up to and bring back to me the information. That's it. Don't do anything else. Do not do anything else. These are the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. They know what does that mean. Do not do anything else. They know what it means. In our time, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un. You have a lot of ta'wilat. Qala fulan, qala fulan. A person will give you lecture on how many opinions are there and the hadith is very clear. Don't, don't. The hadith is very clear, but they have so many interpretations nowadays. That's why we are lost. You see us, we are confused. How many times, if you're a student of knowledge or somebody who's given da'wah, how many times you might receive a question, people are telling you we're confused. They don't have this confusion in the past because they understood how to follow the Prophet ﷺ precisely and to deal with the literal meaning of the text. In our time, no, we are expert, we're smart. You know, we have, our knowledge is more expand, uh, I mean, expanded than what they did have, you know. That's the reason why we are in a state of loss. So look at what happened with Hudayfa. Hudayfa went and he found them, subhanAllah, he found that actually the Muslims are in a state of peace. The cold and the wind that is affecting the Muslims actually is really, really insignificant if you compare it with the one that Allah SWT put in the place of the enemies. There's they're living in a hurricane. They're fighting the wind to keep their tent, you know. At least the Muslims, theirs is okay. There's a cold, a very cold, but that wind is not there. But with them, they're fighting the wind to keep the tent. The wind, the, it, the wind is taking their pots, their food, and, and, uh, and their tent, throwing it anywhere. You know? So they managed to reach them. When he went, that was a night. He found a big fire being uh, introduced by them and people are surrounding it and next to the fire there is a very a big person you know, who is giving them khutbah. So they realize that this is Abu Sufyan, the one who brought them actually before he converted to Islam. He was the one who was leading the battle during the battle of the trench. He found out that this is Abu Sufyan. What was he uh, doing? He was giving them khutbah, people. You see that it has been almost, and he were heading towards two months of our camp here. And we did not achieve a single thing here. And you have seen what is going on now. I am uh, telling you there is some, some, something hidden which we don't know. So my my advice is that we just have to leave this place and go back. And subhanAllah, they are all tired also. When he told them, I already, I'm already giving my advice, and my advice is to take, to move and go back. All of them said, yes, we should go back, you know. Hudayf ibn Yaman said, I saw him speaking, and I know that this is Abu Sufyan, the leader of the, uh, what do you call, the leader of the, 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 the enemies. He said, it was night. I can just take my, 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 my arrow, you know. Uh, he said, I can shoot him. And nobody knows. I can just shoot him and kill him. Because nobody sees another person. We don't see. Abu Sufyan told them, you guys should check the one who is next to you. We don't know what is going on among us. So, Hatta Hudayf al Yaman, he thought he's going to be discovered by them. But Muslims is always smart, you know, if he follows the deen correctly. So that's why, what did he do, uh, Hudayfa? He hits the one next to him, he asked him, Man ant. He said, who are you? But he did it in secret. He told him, who are you? 
The man told him, I'm so and so and so person. So when the one who was next to him from the left side heard that person introducing himself, you know, he also introduced himself to, to him. So Hudayfa was protected, you know, he hit this one, he told him, who are you? The guy speak, I'm so and so and so person. So the one next to Hudayfa, when he heard that, he thought that this guy is introducing himself to him. So he also introduced himself. So Hudayfa was protected. But subhanAllah, he said, I was going to, I just, I was trying just to take my arrow and shoot Abu Sufyan and just kill him. But then he said, I remember the word of Rasulullah, La tuhdith shay'an, do not do anything. He said, I put it down. SubhanAllah. See, Qadr can see what obedience, those companions, what obedience is all about. Those companions, they really taught, taught us a good lesson on how to obey Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to succeed in this life. He did not do. And you can see that Qadr kataba lihada rajul and yuslima fi niha. You know, based on the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Abu Sufyan is going to accept Islam afterwards. And that's exactly what happened. So you can see how Allah SWT prevented him from being killed so that he can get that virtue afterward. So this is the battle of the trench in, in brief. Allah SWT says, وَرَدَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِغَيْذِهِمْ لَمْ يَنَالُوا الْخَيْرَىٰ وَكَفَ اللَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنِ الْقِتَالِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ قَوِيًّا عَزِيزًا وَأَنزَلَ الَّذِينَ ظَاهَرُوهُمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ مِنْ صَيَاصِيهِمْ وَقَذَفَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمُ الرُّعْبَ فَرِيقًا تَقُتُلُونَ وَتَأْسِرُونَ فَرِيقًا وَأَوْرَثَكُمْ أَرْضَهُمْ وَدِيَارَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ أَرْضًا لَمْ تَطَعُوهَا وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he took back the kuffar, the enemies. بِغَيْذِهِمْ You know, they were so mad and so angry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala packed them with all of their hatred. Get them back to where they came from. SubhanAllah. Without having the Muslims spending any effort to go and fight them with sword. They did effort to protect Medina, but they did not need to engage in anything. Allah SWT took them back by His own means. Allah says, Lam yanalu khayra. They never get anything. Whatever brought them to the, uh, to the place has not been achieved. They achieved nothing. So Allah SWT took them back. So now, the criminals, I call them the real criminals, the Jews in Medina, who cooperate with those guys, and plot against Rasulullah from inside. Because they really put the Muslims into test. You know. Rasulullah came back home. Of course, he's mad at them, but he came back home to relax. Jibreel came to the Prophet and he told him, Ya Rasulullah, what happened? What are you doing? He told him, We're done. He said, If you are done, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels are not done. So Rasulullah asked him, what else? Jibreel pointed at the side of the body of Quraiza. The Prophet understood the message. So he went out and told the Muslims, whoever uh, I mean, believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and the hereafter is not allowed to pray Asr prayer illa fi Bani Quraiza, unless if he, I mean, until he reaches Bani Quraiza. That's why you have some of the Muslims when the prayer time arrives on the way, they prayed. Some of them said no. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Fi bani Qurayza." They waited until they reached bani Qurayza, and when they reached, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they told them about what happened. He did not blame any one of them because the ijtihad here is possible. Although the one who is correct is the one who prayed on time on the way, because obviously Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted them to go out of Medina very quickly. So that was what happened until the end of the, that battle. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam got rid of those uh, criminals. Anyone who reaches the age of maturity has been killed by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That was the command from Allah subhanahu wa taala. The rest, they were all enslaved, and this is the reference Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, said in Surah Al Hazab when He says, "Fariqan taqtuluna wa taasiruna fariqa." So Allah subhanahu wa taala tawfiq. But this uh, this story is, is quite interesting, as I, and as I said, it. It has a lot of lessons in it, a lot of lessons in it. I really advise us to read the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu read it a lot, a lot, a lot, not just once, read it a lot. You know, it really helps you to understand life and how to maximize your patience and how to succeed in life and how to follow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
Okay, so Jabir said, we were with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during the Battle of the Trench. We are making the trench. فَعَرَضَتْ كُدْيَةٌ شَدِيدًا He said, while we are making the trench, you know, a, a rock appears. فَجَاءُوا إِلَى النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَقَالُوا هَذِهِ كُدْيَةٌ عَرَضَتْ فِي الْخَنْدَقِ You know, they try. Imagine uh, <clears throat> ten people try to break it, they couldn't. Ten people, they try, they hate it. They hate it. It doesn't want to go, you know. It doesn't want to move, you know. What was the re result? They, call, uh, they went back to the Prophet ﷺ. They called Rasulullah ﷺ. So Anas said, uh, Jabir said, فَجَاءُوا إِلَى النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَقَالُوا هَذِهِ كُلِّهَا عَرَضَتْ فِي الْخَنْدَقِ They say, Ya Rasulullah, there is one rock which, which appears and we did not know what to do with it. قَالَ أَنَا نَازِلْ Allahu Akbar. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told them, no problem, I'm coming down to you. Meaning, I'm coming to you. ثُمَّ قَامَ وَبَطْنُهُ مَعْصُوبٌ بِحَاجَرٍ Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. They said, Jabir said, the Prophet ﷺ stood up, when he stood up, subhanAllah, I saw him tying a rock on his stomach, you know. Because there is nothing, the stomach was empty. So the Prophet ﷺ was so light, he wants to, pee, uh, he wants to feel some, some uh, heavy, you know, heaviness. So what did he do? He brought a rock and he tied it on his, on his stomach. قَالَ وَلَبِثْنَا ثَلَاثَةَ أَيَّامٍ لَا نَذُوقُ ذَوَاقَ Javid said, we spent three days without, testing, uh, without tasting anything, you know. Three days, no food. They drink water, but no food. SubhanAllah. قَالَ فَأَخَذَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ الْمِعْوَلَ فَذَرَبَ فَعَادَ كَثِيبًا أَهْيَلَ أَوْ أَهْيَمْ فَقُلْتُ Ya Rasulullah, so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he took the, the mi'wal, that's the, the hammer, or whatever they're hitting the rock with it, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he reached them, he said, can I have it? They gave it to him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, dharabahu. In another place, uh, they mentioned the detail of what happened. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came and he took the thing, you know. He hit it. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hit it, light, light comes out, you know. The spark was a big light, very huge light. When he sees that, he says, Allahu Akbar. He hits the rock. So you can see, you, you see, you see the sign of, you know, that uh, the hits on that rock, you know, that definitely this rock is sovereign. It's going to go, you know. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hit it again. And then uh, he saw the light. He makes takbir and the believers, they make takbir. So uh, the Prophet Sallallahu hated the third one, it was gone. And SubhanAllah, uh, he told them, they told him, Ya Rasulullah, uh, we saw a light come in when you hit it. And we heard you saying, Allahu Akbar. You know, what, what, what happened, Ya Rasulullah? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, oh, you saw that light. He thought he's the only one who was seeing, you know. But Allah SWT let them see it. So uh, they saw the light, so he, uh, they told him, yes, Ya Rasulullah, we saw it. He said, in the first one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown me that the Qusur Kisra or Qaisar, Qaisar Rome, the Roman Empire, the castles. That was an indicator that they are going to defeat those ones. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me a good news that we are going to reach those ones and we will defeat them and we will take over. That's why I said, Allah Akbar. And the second one, he saw the, the Persian, you know, empire. So that's why he was, uh, he was making the takbir. So the munafiqeen, when they heard that, subhanAllah, it became more fitna for them. They said, what is this? Ahaduna la ila al-hammam. They said, one of us cannot even go to the toilet except in a state of fear. And now he is telling us that they are going to defeat the Persians and the Romans. What is this? They said this is nothing but a deception. You know. But subhanAllah, does that happen? Yes, it did happen. During the time of Umar and Uthman, that was finalized. Those nations, they were brought back to justice. You know. They were brought down to their knees. That injustice that they used to place on the nations was taken away from them. What destroys completely.
Many of them accepted Islam, and those who rejected, they are brought back to the, they are brought down to their knees, precisely in the way the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned. Because there was nothing said by the Prophet sallallahu to be happening in the future, except that it happened precisely, precisely in the way he said it. And those that did not happen, they will happen, wallahi, precisely and exactly in the way the Prophet sallallahu mentioned. Allah says, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْأَفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَنْيَنَا لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ So Jabir said, I realized that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is like, so when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa hit it, it was gone completely. You can see how much, you know, power the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has. The skills are at the peak of the skill. To see a warrior and a brave person like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not easy. The companions did not see. And those people, they are smart, they are experts in battles. Those who are the Arabs, the balance of the early Arabs, they are really experts in battle. They live in battles. You know. They know how to fight, they know the skills, they know all of these things. But the Prophet has superseded all of them. That's the reason why they said, you know, when the battle is so tough, and they, 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 you don't see anything except dust and the ooze, you know, falling down. You know, and blood, you see nothing except dust and blood, you know, flying in the air, flying in the air. The companions sometimes, they will be looking for a place to hide. And they will realize that there is no place for them to protect themselves except behind Rasulullah But they said, unfortunately, whenever we look for him, we find him in the middle of the enemies. They were looking for him to hide behind him, but they will see him in the middle of the enemies, then they cannot go, you know. <laughs> SubhanAllah. That's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Somebody came to him one day, I just want you to feel how much Allah SWT put on this man, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bless him in almost every dimension. Somebody came to him, uh, to, the, to, the, to the Muslims, you know, during one of the battles, and he said, I want Rasulullah, uh, I'm sorry, I want Muhammad. He did not say Rasulullah because he was kafir. He said he wants Muhammad. So Rasulullah sallam, told them, he wants me. They said, no, ya Rasulullah, we are scared. You know. Let us go and take care of him. He said, no, he wants me. And that person, he thinks, you know, he can do everything because he covered himself from head to toe with a metal. He covered himself. They said, you cannot see anything on him except the eyes. All the rest of the part of him, they are covered with the metal. Even if you hit him with sword, with spear, you're just wasting your time. You can push him down, but you cannot uh, kill him with a sword because there is no uh, place that is open on him which could be, could be attacked by somebody. SubhanAllah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told them, he said he wants me. <laughs> They said, Ya Rasulullah, please don't go. He said, no, he said, he want me, you know. The Prophet took the, the spear from one of the Muslims. He doesn't even care about what that guy has, you know. He took the, the spear from him. They said, فَحَزَّهَا حَزَّةً تَطَعِرْنَا مِنْهَا The Prophet shook it, you know. When he shook it, the air that was coming out of that, that, that spear, the, uh, the, the companions who were there, they said, it's like, we're going to fly with the air that is coming, you know. SubhanAllah. Can you imagine how strong was Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So he took the thing and he shoot, you know, and, and guess what happened? It goes and it hit the person in that hole that remains the hole of the eye. That place, it goes, you know, precisely to the place, you know. And that was the end of that person who says he wants Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in, in a battle. So that was Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam back to the, this. So he says, the, the rock was destroyed completely. فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ And then I said, Ya Rasulullah, can I have your, your permission? Can you excuse me to go home and come back? The Prophet Sallallahu granted him the permission. فَقُلْتُ لِمْرَأَتِي رَأَيْتُ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ رَأَيْتُ بِالنَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم شَيْئًا مَا فِي ذَلِكَ صَبْرٌ uh, إِنْدَكِ شَيْءٍ Subhanallah. He says, I went back very quickly to my wife. I told her, I saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a situation, I don't think somebody can handle that situation anymore. Is he really reached a situation that nobody can be patient? You know, he's talking about the companions. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can be patient, much more than that. But it's a very critical and a tough situation with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
Javid told his wife, he said, I don't think there is somebody who can handle that situation anymore. Please, do you have anything, anything that we can give him to eat? فقالت عندي شعير وعناق. She said, I have. I have شعير, a small amount of wheat, and I have anak. I have a small uh, goat, you know, or sheep. فذبحت العناق. He said, immediately I, 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 I slaughter the, the, the sheep. وطحنت الشعير حتى جعلنا اللحم في البرمة. ثم جئت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والعجين قد كسر والبرمة بين الأثاف قد كادت فقلت طعيم لي فقم أنت يا رسول الله أنت يا رسول الله ورجل أو رجلا قال كم هو The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم أجابر said I slaughtered the thing and I blend the, the wheat you know to get the flour from it so that we can get it ready you know for the uh, for the khubz you know the bread and now uh, I make sure that the, the, the meat is uh, put on the, the pot, on the fire. Then I left to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When I went to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I already uh, prepared the, the door. You know, he said, I went to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, I told him, Ya Rasulullah, Tu'aymul lana. We have a little amount of food. And see, look at the way even he, <laughs> he mentioned it. He said, Tu'aym. We have a little amount of food, Ya Rasulullah. Please do come you and one person or two people from uh, the people who are with you. Qala kam hu? The Prophet asked him, he said, how much is that food? You know, and how, I want to know the size of the food, the food, how big it is. Fadakartu lahu. Faqala kathirun. I told him, Ya Rasulullah, was just a small tiny sheep and some shair, you know. The Prophet said, Oh, that's that's big amount of food. <laughs> so he said, The Prophet told him, Please tell your wife she shouldn't remove the pot from the fire. Yeah, because Jabir said, I left her, put uh, she put it by an athafi. Athafi, you know, in the old days, I don't know whether you guys uh, witnessed this. I'm talking about the young uh, people like Abdurrahman. Uh, when they cook in the in the old days, uh, they have uh, three three stones, you know, three or four stones, and they put the fire in the middle and they put the the pot on them. You know, that was the stove in <laughs> in those days. So, so so this this at Athafi, he said we already make that one. We put the pot, so it was. Uh, in the process of uh, cooking. So the Prophet Sallallahu told them, please do not do anything. Yeah, uh, do not do anything until I, t uh, until I come. You know, tell her, please, she shouldn't do anything with that meat. She should live in the way it is until I come. فَقَالَ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَقَامَ الْمُهَاجِرُونَ وَالْأَنصَارِ فَدَخَلْتُ عَلَيْهَا فَقُلْتُ وَيْحَكِ جَاءَ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَمَنْ مَعَهُ Jabir said, the Prophet ﷺ told the Muhajirin, everyone should come. You know, he told them, you guys come, we have a food here. <laughs> so he took all of them to the house of Jabir. And Jabir said, I need only one or two people with you, Ya Rasulullah. So Rasulullah ﷺ left, so Jabir said, I went into my, uh, to, the, my, to my wife, into the house, I met her. I said, Esther, you, <laughs> you are in trouble. The Prophet ﷺ is here with all the Muhajirin and Ansar who are with him. Woman <laughs> and others also. That are not from the Muhajirin, from the Ansar, they are also there. So she said, Did he ask you about what we have? You know. Javid said, Yes, he asked me. So she kept quiet. The Prophet ﷺ reached the house, he told the companions, please come in, but don't push each other. La tadagaw means la tazahamu. Don't push each other. Just everyone should sit in, in a place without uh, pushing each other. فَجَعَلَ يَكْسِرُ الْخُبْزَ وَيَجْعَلَ عَلَيْهِ اللَّحْمَ وَيُخَمِّرُ الْبُرْمَةَ وَالتَّنُّورَ فَإِذَا أَخَذَ مِنْهُ يُقَرِّبُهُ إِلَى أَصْحَابِهِ ثُمَّ يَنْزِعُ فَلَمِّ يَزَلْ يَكْسِرُ وَيَغْرِفُ حَتَّى شَابِعُ وَبَقِيَ مِنْهُ SubhanAllah. The Prophet ﷺ went to the place, to the place where the thing is cooked, you know, 
the Athafi, the Prophet Sallallahu covered the, 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 the pot and also the Tanur. Tanur is the, the oven, the place where uh, the Khubz is, is being made. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi covered. So he will open and take something and take some part of it and take the meat and put the, 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 the khubz and the meat and then he pass it to a companion and then he will close it. You know, subhanallah. Until the time all of those one ate from it and they become full. You know, what wasn't sufficient for four people, now it is sufficing. Huge amount of people, around 1,000 plus. فقال, when, it fin when the Prophet ﷺ finished with everyone, قَالَ قُولِي هَذَا وَأَهَدِي فَإِنَّ النَّاسَ أَصَابَتْهُمْ مَجَاعَةً سبحان الله سرق الله حيث يقول وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ The Prophet ﷺ passed it to uh, the wife of Jabir. He said, you should go and eat this. You and the family and please share with others because people are starving in, in the city. Allah Akbar. وفي رواية قال جابر لما حفر الخندق رأيت بالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم خامصا فانكفأت إلى امرأتي فقلت هل عندك شيء فإني رأيت برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خامصا شديدا فأخرجت إلي جرابا فيه صاع من شعير ولنا بهيمة داجن فذبحتها In another narration almost the same thing Jabir said I saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is very I saw hunger with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم so I quickly left to my wife, you know, and I went to her, I asked her, do you have anything? Because I really uh, feel that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is suffering from the hunger. So she said, yes, I have a little bit amount of shair, one saw, around 2.5 kg. And also I have dajin. This is a small buhayma, small animal dajin, the one that uh, stays home. You know. So further back to her, so he slaughtered it. As he said in the previous narration, قَالَ وَطَحَنْتُ الشَّعِيرَ فَفَرَغْتُ إِلَى فَرَاغِ وَقَطَّعْتُهَا فِي بُرْمَةٍ ثُمَّ وَلَّيْتُ إِلَى رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ فَقَالَتْ لَا تَفْضَحَنِي بِرَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ This one is really interesting. He said, I did all the process, I slaughter, I cut the meat, I put it in the pot, and then I went to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. When I, when I went out to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, she told me before I go out, she said, please, please do not embarrass me with the pro in the presence of Rasulullah You know that this food is little. Please do everything possible to make sure that only Rasulullah comes with a few. Don't bring all of them and then I become so embarrassed because I don't have food to feed everyone. So Jabir told her, no worries, I will go and do it. قالت لا تفضحني برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ومعه فجئته فساررته So I went to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم I remember my wife I have to keep her, her feelings you know uh, intact I, 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 I don't want to embarrass her because it's not good for me to do that you know. So I went to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فساررته بذلك So I, I talked to him in secret I talked to him in secret you know. فقلت يا رسول الله ذَبَحْنَا بُهَيْمَةً So I talked to him in secret, Ya Rasulullah, you know, ذَبَحْنَا بُهَيْمَةً we, we slaughter a small animal, we slaughter a small animal, وَطَحَنْتُ سَعَنْ مِنْ شَعِيرٍ فَتَعَالَ أَنْتَ وَنَفَرُ مَعَكَ He said, Ya Rasulullah, I have some uh, little amount of shair, and I blended it, you know, to make khubz with it. Ya Rasulullah, please come, you are a very, very little amount of people with you. You know, in the previous narration, he said, one or two people, Ya Rasulullah. So, فَصَاحَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ فَقَالَ يَا أَهْلَ الْخَنْدَقِ إِنَّ جَابِرًا قَدْ سَنَعَ سُؤْرًا فَحَيَّ حَلَبِكُمْ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم shouted, you know, he raised up his voice. He says, people, the people of the trench, Jabir is making a feast for you. Please come to his house, you know. <laughs> Subhanallah. فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تنزلوا النبرمتكم ولا تخ بزن عجينكم حتى أجيء. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, please do not remove the pot from the fire, and also don't you ever, uh, uh, I mean, do the the khubz, the door. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, don't don't prepare the the khubz. He said, wait for me until I come. 
Don't make the bread yet. Wait for me until I come. فَجِئْتُ وَجَاءَ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقْدَمُ النَّاسَ حَتَّى جِئْتُ إِمْرَأَتِي فَقَالَتْ بِكَ وَبِكَ <laughs> So Jabir said, I came back and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, I saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم coming also with the companions. He's in front of them and they were behind, all of them. I went, I told my wife, what happened? فَقَالَتْ بِكَ وَبِكَ بِكَ وَبِكَ يعني she told him all kinds of words. <laughs> she was very mad at him. So she kept scolding him, you know, saying whatever comes, you know, uh, to her mouth, which is possible to be said to the husband. She scolded him. What's wrong with you? You know, why, why did you do that? I told you I didn't have any, anything except something that can suffice, uh, suffice Rasulullah and a few from among his companions. فَقُلْتُ قَدْ فَعَلْتُ الَّذِي قُلْتِ So Jabir told her, my dear wife, I did exactly what she, you said. I talked to him in secret. And I told him, Ya Rasulullah, we have a little. You know, so he said, and that, that shows how companions are living, you know. She does have a right to uh, tell him what is her feeling. And he accept, he accept that. He told her, but I did, you know. I did told him, but... Uh, I did tell him, but uh, this is what happened. He came with all the companions. You know. What can I do? I cannot tell him, don't. This is Rasulullah. So, فَقُلْتُ قَدْ فَعَلْتُ الَّذِي قُلْتِ فَأَخْرَجَتْ عَجِينَنَا فَبَسَقَ بِهِ وَبَارَكَ ثُمَّ عَمَدَ إِلَى بُرُمَتِنَا فَبَسَقَ فِيهِ وَبَارَكَ فَبَسَقَ فِيهِ وَبَارَكَ ثم قال ادعي خابزة فلتخبز معك واقدحي من برمتك ولا تنزلوها وهم ألف سبحان الله The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم came so they brought he went to the 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 part the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم opened it he made to a قال فيه ما شاء and then he blow in it and and he uh, ask Allah SWT to put barakah in it and he went to the meat also did the same thing the khubz also the same thing uh, so this is when it is uh, before even they, they make the, the khubz I'm sorry before they make the bread it is in the in the in the dough uh, format the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them uh, uh, he told the wife please go and look for another sister to come and help you in making the khubz <laughs> that means something is going to happen you know because if it is for only two or three, she can do it alone. But the Prophet ﷺ said, you need somebody to come and help. Go and look for another sister to help you in this regard. SubhanAllah. Salawatuhu. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. So uh, she went, she brought somebody, the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, you, um, you know, you, you should... Uh, a take from the from the bruma from the meat wala I mean when you are given the the food you should leave the pot on the on the fire and open and just uh, 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 serve uh, people from the from the uh, from the pot while it is still on the fire wala don't bring the pot down qala wahum and they were around 1000 people فَأُقْسِمُ بِاللَّهِ لَأَكَلُوا حَتَّى تَرَكُوا وَانْحَرَفُوا وَإِنَّ بُرْمَتَنَا لَتَغِطُّ كَمَا هِيَ وَإِنَّ عَجِينَنَا لَيُخْبَزُ كَمَا هُوَ Allah Akbar Jabir said Wallahi I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave it to all of those 1,000 people and they ate all of them you know and they were they were full from that khubz and also from that meat and Jabir said, I can still hear the, the boiling of the water on the, on the, on the, I mean, the boiling of the water inside the pot, which shows that the meat is there. I'm sorry. And he said, when we open, we find the meat as if we do not touch it. And the, 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 the ajin also as if we do not touch it. Hadihi barakatun Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa muajiza hasalat li an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Jabir, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mu'allif al-Nawawi, he brought this hadith to support the fact that the life of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu was not that easy in the way some of us might think. This is who they are and that was how they, they live. But 
The difference between them and us is that they have this intensive amount of rida in that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them. They have the kana'ah and they have also the patience. Hunger and difficulty and hardship never deprive them from practicing the deen in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted them to, to practice it. You have heard last week in the class, some of the companions in the prayer, they fall down, right? You know, in the prayer, wa humi salud. Out of what? Out of hunger. But still, they're still in the masjid, they still come to the prayer, you know, some of them, they fall down, and the person will think that they are majaneen, they're possessed by the jinn. But there is nothing with, with them of that nature except the hunger that they are suffering from. So as I said, uh, reading the seerah of those uh, people uh, really acquires a person, you know, great, you know, uh, value and manner, and you will learn a lot. And it really helped a Muslim to regulate his life and also to learn how to succeed in this life and to maintain the patience until he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's uh, all for today, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. The next hadith is quite uh, long also like uh, the previous one. It will also talk about uh, the participation of Umm Sulaim, the mother of Anas, in feeding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and, and the believers. So I don't think it's a wise decision for us to go with this hadith uh, today. So I will keep it for the next uh, class, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you good and tawfiq. And I will be and kafir. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika ashara Allah ilaha illa and astaghfirullah wa ilayk. Dhrahman ilayk al maik. The first question is by Strathana. Uh, this is a question from my sister. I mean, you are taking out food like rice from the pot, starting from what's in front of you. Then, what should we do when we reach the middle of the pot? Should we start taking from the sides, leave the middle part of the end? Okay, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he talks about the barakah, uh, thana, he talks about when the food is already being placed on the, on the plate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yubarika fihi. There is barakah in it. And when it is in the pot, inshallah, we expect the barakah is in every part of it. Because people usually don't eat from, from, the, from, the, from the pot. But if you take the pot and you ask people to eat from the pot at that moment, then the barakah might be in the... In the middle, the Prophet Sallallahu asked us to eat from the from the sides. You get the idea, uh, Thana? So we go with the norm. We go with the norm. The norm is that people will take it from the pot and put it on the plate and then eat. So that's why the Prophet Sallallahu told them eat it from the from the side. But uh, uh, I, I believe, inshallah, it doesn't affect uh, that baraka when you are taken from the pot. You know, uh, you take from the pot and you give it to the people. And usually, uh, sisters who cook, you know, uh, at home when they give, they shake it. They shake, especially the soup, they shake the, the thing, you know, and then give it to the people. So even if there is a barakah in one side, it will go everywhere. But as I said, uh, the hadiths are focusing on the food which is on the plate, uh, ready to be eaten by, by the people. Yes, Abdul Rahman. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, it's a family. Ani, Ani, you too, Kayum. Sheikh, my mother went to the dentist and removed her wisdom teeth. The dentist put cotton to stop the bleeding and told her to not rinse her mouth. Is her wudu valid if she doesn't rinse her mouth? Told her not to rinse the mouth? Yes, because there was cotton in her, her mouth. But that one doesn't take doesn't take long. Yeah, I don't think that one takes a longer time. Yeah, what she should do is to wait. Even if that can cause her to combine the pray the prayers, uh, she does that. Let's say it was done in the morning. Uh, uh, yeah, and if uh, she still has to keep it until the whole time, then she waits. She combines the whole and asr. But I don't think it goes uh, uh, for quite long. Usually to stop the blood, it's just uh, for a while. And then it goes. After that, that person can rinse uh, their mouth uh, in the normal way, inshallah. But that's my advice to them. If they have, uh, have to keep it for a very long time, then they, they can combine the prayers. She can wait and do it in the asr time, yeah. inshallah.
Yeah, this is Samuri. There is a hadith that, that talks about uh, uh, the army and that will go and, and, uh, and fight those uh, people and defeat them. And the Prophet said, The first army that will go and fight the people of uh, Constantine, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of their sins. Uh, this one, to my knowledge, is a weak narration. Constantine is going to be open and the Amir is the best or one of the best Umara. This one is a weak narration. But uh, we don't need it, you know. Uh, that first one that I have quoted is more than enough. The Prophet said, the first army that will fight the, the Medina of Constantine, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of their sins. You know, the first army that will go and fight across the sea, I mean through the sea, uh, he says, you know, This happened during the time of Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. That was uh, the time Umm Haram was, was killed also. I lost my heart to the grant us uh, two feet. Mm. Yes, so that one. I think that's the end of the questions. Okay. Okay, if this is the case, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you good and tawfiq in life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in your life. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you and your family and all of us from this uh, pandemic and uh, from any any evil. Innahu bi kulli jameelin kafeel. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik ashadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfirullah wa tubi ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.